right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline is CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Chicago by Marie Hale. How are you doing, Marie? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> Excellent. And Marie is a co-founder and she's the visionary of At Revenue, the uh, company that she's been running for many years, uh, where Marie's revolutionized small business marketing and sales in the Chicagoland area. And what we wanted to talk about today was uh, sales leadership, but how it has psychologically changed the whole paradigm and the shift uh, has changed during the pa uh, pandemic. So let's get straight into it, M Marie. Why do you think sales leadership has gone through this change and why do you think it's so fundamental? So we've got a, an entire world that is in limbic fatigue. We're exhausted, we're mentally exhausted, we're emotionally exhausted, we're zoomed off of our tuchuses. And it's changed the psycholo psychological foundations of how people are able to absorb information as well as how they're forced to interact. And when you've got a team that is used to either getting out there and pounding the pavement or especially being transactionally focused, they don't have an audience that responds to them anymore. And they don't have the same kind of resources that they used to have, especially when you consider that most of our communications is a solid sometimes two by two block of face and effort. And so yeah. we've got to change the way that we are not only building our teams, but how we're equipping them to go out there and effectively communicate with the people that they're there to serve. Yeah, and I think in some ways, uh, you know, leadership did itself a disservice in many ways, because I think at the beginning, and even later on, people were still feeling like, I'm only doing this because I have to, like, one day I'll be back, you know, pounding the pavement, or I'll be back in the office, or I'll be at conferences, and all of this will be good. And, and obviously, uh, nearly a year has gone by, and none of that is true. And I think, I think a lot of companies were slow to realize that you have to say, no, this is how we're doing business and we're going to maximize this as opposed to let's muddle through and hopefully one day everything will go back to the way it was. Or if you're in a space of absolute innovation, how are we going to use this to change the way that we do things forever? Because mm. let's face it, just like how slow was the medical community to adopt virtual visits? Now yeah. it's the thing to do. And, and I just watched um, an, a segment on the Consumer Electronics Expo where the hottest item is a at-home combination stethoscope and otoscope and tongue depressor so that you can have a virtual visit with your kid's pediatrician and show them inside their ears and down their throats. Wow. Would we have and, thought and about that either though? Yeah, no, absolutely. And if you think about it, how much time we've wasted in waiting rooms and for 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 visits to doctors and stuff that aren't, uh, as you would say, like critical that could be dealt with virtually, you're right. It wasn't until it's forced upon us. And I think that's obviously the the yeah. true of many paradigm shifts is they're often forced upon people by circumstances. And it really depends on how you react to it. But what a beautiful space for innovation. We're in this space where we've had to burn everything to the ground. And what happens when you've got scorched earth? New things begin to grow. Absolutely. So what would your advice be to, to the sales leaders and leaders out there who say, OK, I, I don't want to be reactive anymore. I want to take this opportunity. I want to be innovative. I want to maximize and optimize everything now. And I want to take advantage of this whole situation and do something great with it for me and my team. What, what advice would you give to them? So right off the bat, you've got to be able to empower your team with what is fundamentally changed and how people make decisions because that piece is so critical to how we get people through our pipeline and how we maintain sales cycles and how we're able to really go back and build relationships where sometimes they might not have been built all the way or foster bigger relationships and better referrals from the clients that we have. And so the very first step is open up that conversation about how are we communicating? If 7% of our words or of our ability to communicate as words, 
and we've got 38% tonality and 55% body language. How much are you leaving on the table if you've been an email salesperson? Mm. And how can I give you the tools to understand how your tonality can impact the sale and how to use your body language when you've got a much smaller space to work in to be able to make an impact. And then you've got to look at what your sales process is. And I, we have seen sales cycles triple, triple, simply because we've got people that are in front of Zoom all day long. And most of the time it's back to back to back and they can't fit one more thing in. And by the time you get to them, there's, they're so exhausted that they're not making decisions as quickly as they typically would. When you add on top of that, the cash flow fluctuations, the fear, the uncertainty that's in the air, you've got to have some tools around you that are really going to wrap around not only the people at the top of your pipeline, but wrap around the people that have possibly already come through your pipeline and could increase in their value. So making sure that they are changing their sales process to be proactively communicative as opposed to reactively communicative. And I'm not saying go out and create new sell sheets for every emotion that's possible. That's not the answer. But are we making sure that we're sending out the appropriate and emotionally filled content pieces that need to be sent well before the meeting so that people can review them, whereas we might have just presented to them in that moment, because they need time to process and digest before they can actually have solidified conversations with you. Are we making sure that they understand what limbic fatigue looks like on the other side of a camera, so that if somebody's executive function is not functioning, <laughs> that they know not just getting radio silence, that that person is simply struggling to emotionally or mentally keep up with the conversation, not because they're not paying attention, but simply because they're out of resources at that moment. Yeah. And then how do, we, how do we hang in there as a team when we are all experiencing those exact same things? Because yeah, I, I think it's- Times when there's somebody yeah. to high five, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think you hit on a number of um, very critical points there that I just wanted to underline. Uh, the the first one that kind of really jumps out is 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 to that point of. So, if you're a salesperson or a sales leader and you're using Zoom every day and you're fatigued and you're you're like, oh my god, another Zoom meeting or whatever, you got to think about the person on the other side is probably feeling exactly the same thing. So here's a challenge for, for sales leaders and salespeople. How do you make your Zoom meeting different from every other Zoom meeting that they're getting, you know, that people are, especially in a sales call, calling them? how do you make it? How do you make it different? How do you acknowledge the fact that they may be fatigued and just sick of it? And it's nothing to do with you. They're just generally like tired of the whole experience. So what do you do to make that experience experience better and stand out? The very first thing is being other focused. If you go in there with just your agenda and don't check in with that person and spend the time to be relationship focused, you're dragging them through something that they're not all the way there to experience. And this is an amazing time to look for new opportunities, to look mm -hmm. for new opportunities to not only connect, but build relationships. And in fostering those conversations upfront and calling it out and being a little bit vulnerable in that call. Listen, right now I'm the world's worst third grade teacher. I am terrible at it. But you know what? I have to get up and do it every day because I'm the whole show. Yeah. The person across the, the video, across the screen is possibly having that same experience. And as a salesperson, your first focus should be that relationship because even if it takes a little more time, you're going to have so much more context and so much more ability to pull compelling reasons from that person and to create a business case for them, not only in their personal life, but in their business goals that you can lean on, that it's gonna be a much easier time getting that sale to close. And also, and you know, this is critical, making sure you've got the right customer. 
making sure yeah. you've got the right person because right now nobody can afford to be wasting their time with somebody who's just going to cost you time and money. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the other thing that you touched on there earlier that I think is critical as well is if you're going to do this right organizationally, uh, you have to look at your sales process and you have to look at how do you approach, because if your sales process was a sales, number one, you should be looking at your sales process all the time anyway, because um, consumers are dynamic at the best of times. But if you had a sales process that was designed for either people being in a bullpen or people being out pounding the pavements or whatever, and now you or everybody's virtual, your sales process is no more, longer applicable. Plus your sales process should match your buyer's buying process. And that has certainly changed since the pandemic. Absolutely. And when we're looking at things like our CRM and how we're weighting things, if you're not checking in on that pipeline and making sure that the things that you thought had value before still have the same values, you're not forecasting appropriately. Mm -hmm. anymore. You're no. not, if you want to have three X your pipeline, you'd better take a step back and, and consider what the new closing ratios are and what the actual value of each interaction is and yeah. make it explode, exceed, and then retreat so that you've got a right balance and check in with your salespeople, make sure that they feel like they've got the resources beyond the sell sheets, beyond the presentations, emotionally and mentally, are they being fed? And what do you need to do to help fix that culture part? That's your responsibility to get them there and and as a sales leader i mean are you are you record are you watching some of your the, the, the presentations your sales people the interactions are doing are you helping them are you making sure that they are maximizing the medium that they're using right now uh, coaching them as you said helping them being proactive with them communicating with them and the other thing you touched on there which i think is incredibly important is that organization level and making sure that prospects and all of that have the information they need in advance and you set it up so it's almost like you're saying to your prospects i hear you this is painful i'm going to make it as painless as i possibly can knowing that maybe this isn't the ideal way that we would normally interact or whatever but i'm going to make it as 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 a as a positive an experience as i possibly can and i'm going to save you as much time as i possibly can yeah and i think it i think part of the magic there is is asking and calling it mm -hmm. out right yeah. One of the tools that we use consistently is uh, disk assessment. And we've got a great product that uh, called Crystal Nose, which will actually give you somebody's behavioral analysis before you even get on the phone with them based on their LinkedIn profile. So if you can go in knowing what their behavioral tendencies are and what is most important to them from a communication level, like you've got an inside ninja cut into what you need to frame around and listen, we've all got people that are high dominant personalities that want to make those decisions quickly and get to it. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a high analytical and they need to have all of the information and then some so they can feel good about it, if you go in hot and heavy, you're going to disconnect from them and you're going to start to feel like a salesperson and yeah. nobody wants to be sold to, especially now. We've been forced mm -hmm. to so many different decisions and options in our lives that people need a place to be in control yeah, and yeah. you can offer that to them. And, it's, and one of the things that we've been using more and more frequently is the micro agreement rule. You've got to have so many micro agreements before you can move on to the next phase, because once we get them in that space of saying yes, it's much more comfortable for them to move. If you go right into a phase that they're not prepared for and they haven't come into emotional agreement or mental agreement with where you're at, you really don't have permission from them to yeah. go forward. And permission is everything right now. Yeah, and I think that's a I, I think that's such a critical point you made there. And I really just want to underline it a couple of times is this idea of you may have to go for micro micro steps, almost baby steps in getting a deal done just because as what you outlined at the beginning, you know, people are afraid, they're not they're worried about cash flow, they're they're worried about they're committing to something that maybe it will be held over their head later because it's you know, because everything starts to go down and they don't want to be 
they don't want to be held accountable for something. So you have to kind of steadily take them to the process. Maybe uh, when times are good, you can bounce a little, but you can't right now and you've got to be very careful. Yeah. And, you know, we look at sales a lot like dating. You got to have a really good first date before you can have that second date or that third date and decide to get married. I don't ever want to say that I'm lowering the bar because we got to keep our standards up, but you've got to make smaller initial first dates for them to yeah. be able to understand who you are because sales is the first ambassador of your brand. It's going to tell yeah. everybody what they need to know, about what it's going to be like to do business with you. And if it's all push and hustle, who wants to be pushed around any more right now than they've already been? Yeah. And, and like you said, I mean, if, if sales cycles are, are, are getting longer and longer, and you said, I mean, even sort of three times as long or, or, or whatever, I mean, you have to start looking at what is your strategy for, for basically the, for the attrition, for keeping going during a process that has so many more opportunities to fall apart. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's time to make sure that your sales and marketing team are hand in glove as opposed to pointing across the hall at each other, because that feedback loop is critical to making fast flips and making sure that that marketing pipeline is robust enough to warm people up, to make sure that your salespeople have the assets that they need to be able to go forward effectively. And we can't nuance for every situation, but we can make really concerted efforts to meet people where they are. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is a great time too now for salespeople to look around their organization and say, you know, what other, what other people are in this organization that could possibly help me? I mean, there's no law that says you can't bring somebody from marketing in on a sales call. There's no law that says you can't bring somebody from engineering or whatever it is. And to be honest, it's much easier now than it once was because once upon a time, if, if a lot of people, if you were traveling to a, 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 a prospect or a customer, you know, you're limited in who you can bring with you if you can. Now with the virtual, you know, pretty much everybody in your organization is an asset to you if you learn how to use them properly. And if you set a good agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you bring a bunch of people in and we don't have housekeeping rules and we don't know who's, who's playing what role, sure. rules can get messy fast. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. But I think, uh, you know, the point is, you, you just just you need to shake things up a little bit. And you need to get a little bit more creative, as you said earlier. And, and, and maybe that's a great opportunity for you to in involve people that you never would have been able to involve before. And that's where you get a lot of that innovation that's coming out of this scorched earth. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Marie, this has been great. Uh, it's been great talking to you. All of Marie's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I um, at Revenue is a sales and marketing consultancy agency that offers fractional services to small to mid-sized businesses. We're there to make sure that as your cash flow fluctuates, You've got a team that can handle everything from the CRO, CMO, or lead sales role, all the way down to the copywriter and the support. And we understand what it means to carry your brands on our backs and do business from a place of professional love. And that's what it's going to take right now. Yeah, no, beautifully said. And I would definitely encourage people to check it out. I think fractional resources is, is a great model, uh, particularly now as, as businesses don't know the future. I mean, uh, you don't know from almost from month to month what the future holds for, for any business right now. So I think uh, um, scaling through fractional resources is a very smart thing to do, particularly at this time. So I would encourage you to go check it out. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine. Thank you, Marie. And I will see all of you for another interview really soon. Yeah.